Okay, the subject is business administration and management, as has been written up here. I will start by the definition and breakdown of this. What is business? Business is any human or non human activity which is undertaken with an aim of making a profit. And uh, that is actually what is there. Anything that human beings are doing in this world, be it somebody running an hotel or for agribusiness, or is running just a shop or wholesale or a retail outlet, that person is a businessman, provided that the, uh, the critical purpose of undertaking that exercise is actually to make a profit out of it, then it becomes business. Now, what then is management? Now, let me come to management. What is management? Management, in this sense, is the process of planning, organizing, directing, staffing, coordinating, and budgeting with the company's resources which includes human resource, financial resource, and the capital resources for the purposes of meeting or achieving the objectives of the organization. That is what we call management. What then is administration? Administration. Administration in this sense is a uh, part of the management which seeks to implement the decisions made by the top management to achieve the objectives which has been specified. In general terms, uh, administration deals with the policy formulation. And the policy is simply a framework of actions or decisions that is taken. So, it's actually true in the sense that when we are talking about business administration and management, then we are combining both the management aspect of it and the administration part of it. That is the policy formulation, implementation, okay? Policy formulation and implementation. All of them are actually coming together. Now, what then can we say is the critical responsibility of uh, an administrator in an organization being part of the organization. Okay, management and administration are being used interchangeably depending on the company policy and the structure of the organization that actually the company has put in place. In certain organizations, you can realize that management is superior to administration. And in some organizations, you can find that administration is superior to the management. But whatever the case, we are seeing this in the sense that when you are a managing director of the company, then you have two critical responsibilities. One, you are the representative of the company to the board of directors. You are linking the board with the operating workforce on the ground. And secondly, you represent the workforce in giving them the feedback on matters pertaining to the decisions that has been made at the board, by, by the board. In that particular sense, what I can say is very simple. It is a gap, it is a bridge that ensures effective implementation of all the policies that have been made by the board. As the representative of the board, therefore, managing director must communicate the objectives to the staff uh, to break it down to each sequence, okay? Sequential activities which are there. In other words, it is the staff who are performing the technical responsibility of implementing the organizational decisions and policies and making them to come into reality. Now, an attempt in this has been made over and over and uh, that means that for anybody who claim to be an administrator or a director of the company, 
first and foremost, you must have precisely defined objectives that you are out to accomplish through your process of administration. Now, one says very well here, and I want to put it in a very, very uh, short perspective. Management by and large, management by and large, as I've said, it is being used interchangeably by the organization. But management, I can say, is purely a process of determining the objectives of the enterprise, designing how these objectives are to be achieved in general terms, designing the appropriate organizational uh, organizational uh, uh, policies to pursue. In other words, you come up with a frame of, of action, you implement it, and you make sure that you measure if at all the predetermined objectives of the organization are going to be effectively and efficiently be achieved. That is a fundamental responsibility of the management. I want to put it in another perspective. Management is always denoted by an acronym PODSCOB. PODSCOB. We call it PODSCOB formula. What is this PODSCOB formula? P stands for planning. O stands for organizing. D stands for directing. CO stands for coordination. And control. Then I have our research. And B, budgeting. All these are actually what constitutes the elements, the elements of management. This simply means that any manager of any company, any organization, whoever enjoys or has the title of manager must plan, must organize, must direct, must coordinate, must staff, and by and large, must come up with the budgeting processes because all the operational activities that are going to take place within the confines of the company shall definitely be having financial implications. So that means every manager must plan first and foremost as it goes forward. Why is staffing important? Staffing is actually going to determine the quality of personnel, the quality of personnel that are actually going to be in charge of that organization the personnel that are going to be uh, doing their job on the basis of their experience, professionalism, and of course, uh, skills that they have as the people. So, I have said and I want to repeat it, the precise definition, management, a process of determining the objectives of an enterprise. Determine the objectives of the enterprise. What exactly are you out to accomplish? as a manager of the organization. Second to that, what is going to happen is what we call deciding how these objectives are going to be achieved in general terms, and of course devising an appropriate organization to pursue the objectives that are there. Setting the goals and allocating the funds that shall actually be able to finance the operations of the company in a more systematic and, uh, and uh, systematic manner so that all the time you can be able to do it. But by and large, the control measures must also be put in place so that if the company is not going toward the direction that everybody else expects, particularly the stakeholders, then there can be some kind of revision to the objectives that are set. 
Fine. Let me come to the board of directors. Who are the board? I want to come up with the structure. Who are the board of directors and what are their responsibilities to the organization? This is an area where now we have a structured organization having the board. Board. How does it work? When you're looking at what we call the organizational structure in, a, in, an, in an established company, then we are going to have shareholders. Shareholders. Then we'll have the board of directors. Is that? Then we have the managing director. Managing director. Then we are going to have general manager. General manager. Now, from general manager, now we can have what is called departmental heads. Departmental heads. We can have here purchasing manager. Purchasing manager. We can have human resource manager. We can have IT department. We can have accounting department. Accounting department. We can have also sales department. And then we can have uh, the other department that deals with the material management department. Material management department. Okay, there could be so many departments that are go we are going to have there. Then now below these people, We'll be having supervisors, superintendents, and operating workforce. But let me say this. The director here, board of directors, they get all their powers from the shareholders, who are the owners of the company. Uh, the shareholders are donating powers to the board of directors. And board of directors are actually donating powers to the managing director. In this particular sense, who qualifies to be the board director? First and foremost, the precondition that person must be a shareholder. Managing director can be a professional picked outside on, he, on the basis of his professionalism or the level of skill and knowledge and experience that he has because purely is going to be in charge of policy implementation in the organization. And the communication process in this company shall actually be going down as it is. Now, let me look at this. When we are talking about the board of directors company, whether it's in uh, a limited company or a public uh, corporations, then most cases they're going to have a similar responsibilities and duties that we expect them to do. What's the role of the board? Board is the brain of the company. Board is the brain of the company. Brain of the organization. That is the board. Board uh, do what is called uh, review. Overseeing the implementation. Overseeing the implementation of the company policies, policies. The board, in actual sense, supervises the managing director, supervises the uh, managing director, the MD. The board, all the time, can initiate 
new program a new program to be implemented by the company that is the board so is actually performing generally what you call an oversight role the boards are performing the oversight roles in the organizations where they are so once a managing director has been hired on a professional basis and is going to be subjected, scrutinized, recruited, selected and recruited by the board, and all that is going to do, the overseer in that sense, is purely going to be one body called the board of directors. So the board of directors are actually an important part of the limited company. And... Uh, uh, is as important as a chairman. All board of directors must have the so-called secretary. Who qualifies to be the check secretary to the board? In that sense, it is a managing director.